everyone and in this video we'll be investigating membrane permeability. In experiments like this, we usually use beetroot because beetroot has a distinctive red color pigment in the cells. So if the membrane becomes more permeable, more pigment will be released into the surrounding solution. So in this case, we'll be investigating the effect of different concentrations of ethanol on beetroot membrane permeability. So ethanol, we're going to make a range of concentrations using simple dilution and we're going to prepare our beetroot, cut them into the same sizes and then we're going to soak the beetroot into the ethanol and last but not least, measure the absorbance of the solution using a spectrophotometer. So first things first, let's prepare our simple dilutions of ethanol solution. So we're going to start with 40% and using uh, the steps outlined in my previous video, how to perform simple dilutions, we come up with these volumes. So the volume of stock solution here refers to the 40% and we're going to uh, top it up until all the solutions are 10 cm cubed. So they are all the same uh, volume at the end. So different concentrations, same volume. Okay, this is me performing the simple dilutions in real life. Now, personal preference, I like to add all the ethanol first and then add all the water at one go or the other way around. Uh, that's because I don't need to keep switching stringers or get confused. So I add according to the table we calculated just now. Now, um, make sure that all the final volumes of the solution is 10 cm cubed. Next up, we will be preparing um, the beetroot cylinder. So we use this tool called cork borer and it will make cylinders for us as we stab it through the beetroot. And then we're going to cut this beetroot into 10 mm long cylinders. So the diameter is already constant because of the cork borer. So we just standardize the length to be 10 mm long. So yeah, we do that and we prepare five cylinders for each concentration. And since we have five concentrations, that means we have 25 beetroot cylinders to prepare in total. After that, we actually take these 25 pieces of beetroot and soak them in distilled water for a few minutes just to wash off the extra dye that was produced due to the cutting process. After that is done, we actually place five beetroot cylinders into each concentrations, which are in test tubes here. And then we start the timer. Now this is a source of error because it's humanly impossible to put 25 pieces of beetroot cylinders into each concentration at the same time. It's very difficult. So it's a source of error. Now, as we time uh, 10 minutes, every minute we are going to mix the test tubes a little bit to ensure even dye distribution and this makes sure that there is a concentration gradient like there's an even concentration gradient for the pigment to diffuse down however this is also a source of error because it's impossible to get the dye evenly distributed like 100 percent of time we can only do this every minute so yeah that is a problem Anyways, we can see our results here. It looks pretty good. Um, the highest concentration of ethanol would have the most intense color. And this, because, this is because ethanol will make the membrane more permeable. Now, this is because the phospholipids in the membrane actually can dissolve in ethanol, especially those non-polar tails. And when they dissolve in out ethanol, which is an alcohol, the membrane is disrupted and the pigment is released from the cells. So the more concentrated the uh, ethanol is, the more membrane disruption can occur. Anyways, we can look at this qualitatively and look at the color intensity, uh, but we also should definitely take a quantitative uh, measure of the um, absorbance using a spectrophotometer. So this is me pouring uh, the, the solutions into cuvettes and we're going to take these cuvettes and put them in the spectrophotometer. 
Now, with the spectral photometer, we are going to blank it first or zero the spectral photometer using a blank cuvette. This is just distilled water, because set it to zero, and every cuvette we measure, every solution we measure, is going to have an absorbance that is relative to the original distilled water cuvette, which is set at zero. So it's an arbitrary measurement. It's comparative. And this is the results I got. Uh, you can see here that it doesn't follow the trend, uh, the real results anyway. And I actually swapped some values so that it follows the trend. And even though this seems a bit dodgy, it's very dodgy actually in real life. Do not do this in real life. But in Cambridge A-levels, they require your results to follow a certain trend. And therefore, if you, you get results that don't follow trend, you should definitely uh, modify it a little bit so that it fits the trend perfectly. Um, Basically, with increasing ethanol concentration, you should have increasing absorbance. Your results should reflect that, and there's definitely a mark for, the, for it. And yeah, that's the experiment. Hope you learned something. See you next video. Bye-bye.